Good morning and uh, welcome to uh, our talk this morning for the second Sunday in Advent. Uh, Advent, what are you waiting for? Uh, today is the 6th of December uh, and in large parts of the world this is the feast of St Nicholas, uh, Santa Claus, uh, particularly in the Orthodox Church and particularly in Greece. Uh, tonight, uh, usually during uh, the evening meal, uh, the power is going to go off. Um, in people's homes and uh, and flats, um, mum or dad will have snuck out to the to the cupboard. Um, there will be shrieks from the children, and after a few seconds, the lights will come back on, and somehow sacks of toys and pre presents will have appeared. Um, it's tonight that Santa Claus delivers the goodies. Uh, in one way, it gets the commercial bit out of the way, clearing the decks uh, for Christmas. Uh, today's reading is from the Gospel of St Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8, uh, and I'm going to read that uh, for us now uh, from the Bible. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <clears throat> it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word and we simply ask now that you come to speak to our hearts to draw us closer to you and we give you all the praise and all the glory and all of the honour in Jesus' name. Amen. I find it fascinating, fascinating that uh, Mark's Gospel is probably the oldest Gospel uh, even though it's placed after Matthew in our Bibles. It is the first one written uh, and therefore this opening passage is the oldest Gospel uh, words ever written think about it the very first occasion therefore that somebody mark took the effort to o write an, an open account about jesus uh, to tell people about him it was to make clear that this message was for everyone it was never intended for either a religious or intellectual elite from the very beginning it was meant for everyone it's interesting to imagine what what it would be like, what our view would be like, if this was the only piece of scripture that had survived. What might we learn about God and ourselves just from this snippet? What are we waiting for in Advent? Well, Mark starts by setting his stall out from the very beginning. Advent starts adventure. First, what you're about to read or hear is primarily and foremostly about someone called Jesus. Uh, in Hebrew, the name is Yeshua. It means Yahweh saves, or Yahweh is salvation. Basically, God saves. That he is the Messiah, Hamashiach in Hebrew, or Christos in the Greek. Uh, they mean the same thing, uh, the anointed. Uh, we might use words like uh, chosen or appointed, the Son of God. This is not merely another prophet or a do-gooder as the world or some other faiths would believe. Secondly, Mark, probably heavily influenced by St Peter, who some scholars believe almost dictated parts of the Gospel, then draws in some good old-fashioned Jewish prophecy from some of the most widely quoted and well-known Jewish texts from some 400 years and 600 years before Jesus was even born. Firstly, at Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way. And then from Isaiah 
chapter 40 verse 3 a voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord make straight in the desert a highway for our God not simply predicting a Messiah's arrival but even a person who would announce the Messiah's arrival John the Baptist if you've watched the VidAngel production series uh, The Chosen uh, you'll know that they have some of the disciples in that nickname him Creepy John uh, because of his dress and behaviour but here Mark simply describes what many reading or listening at the time may have already known or recalled that John was preaching and teaching about repentance uh, it's no wonder that the very first words uttered by Jesus in Mark's gospel that Mark attributes to him uh, in this chapter verse 15 are the time has come the kingdom of God has come near repent and believe the good news repentance is not simply being sorry for something we've done wrong though that is part of it it's not simply making amends for what we've done wrong though again that's part of it it looks more like changing the direction we've been looking for happiness because we won't find happiness or true joy there not in shopping or relationships or any other crutch we might think of for John it means turning from the political and social agendas that were driving Israel towards a crazy ruinous rebellion for us turning from the social and political agendas of those around us for John it meant turning back to a true loyalty to Yahweh their God and as we see from uh, the Old Testament this was what had to happen before God would redeem Israel at last John's call to repent is part of the announcement that this was the time for the great moment of freedom of God's rescue and thirdly that John was not the person to focus on every year at Passover even even to this day the Jews would retell the story in the Old Testament of how God rescued Israel from Pharaoh bringing him through the Red Sea and away from the wilderness to their promised land along with the crossing of the Jordan River by uh, Joshua to enter the promised land it's one of the most important stories in the whole Old Testament and John hearers would have known it well but instead of simply hearing the words and remembering the story John was turning it into a drama and telling his hearers that they were the cast they were to come through the water and be free they were to leave behind Egypt the world of sin maybe it's not a coincidence that he was baptizing in the Jordan the very river that Israel had passed through John points to the person Jesus who was coming over the horizon John clearly views Jesus as being uh, beyond a mere follow-up prophet or a miracle worker and notice what he talks about baptism yes but a baptism by Jesus with or as the Greek word suggests in the Holy Spirit no one could do that except God himself what we're waiting for this advent is not a baby in a manger what we're looking for is Jesus's return as God in power here again the message for you Jesus the Son of God is coming not only for others but for you that this is the time to check our orientation to again repent it comes from a, a stable of Latin words like repel retreat retire check the direction we are facing and lastly anointed in the Holy Spirit to lift our heads from the routine from the awfulness of our current circumstances look forward look up not simply to the baby in a manger but to Jesus's return in power let's pray our father God in heaven who sent your son Jesus to redeem the world and will send him again give us grace to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming that when he comes again we may be ready to greet him in joyful love and a firm faith and we ask this 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a blessed week.